It's time for an experiment. For those of you who are unaware of this, there are live streams on this channel. And when I do a live stream, I record from this area. And there is a slight downside to that. This area is fairly boxy. It's got a wall here, a wall here. It's got the wall behind the camera. It's got the bench down here and it's got a ceiling here. So it does form a bit of a box and that changes the acoustics. So I've decided to experimentally use some acoustic foam just to see if that can change things. So the test here is that I'm talking normally now and once I've actually put the foam on, that will be the continuation of the video and you'll hear what it sounds like afterwards. So the choice of foam supplier was not the cheapest from China this time, partly because uh, foam is one of these things that because it's made in situ and it's quite bulky, um, it's easier to make it in the UK and ship it in the UK than it is to ship it from China because quite often if you buy the foam products from China they'll be very, very low density and they'll be squashed as flat as a pancake to try and squeeze them through the postal system. There's another reason and it's uh, flammability. Watch this. If I set fire to this foam, you'll see that it doesn't sustain flame. This is very important. It wants to go on fire, but it can't go on fire because it has flame retarding additives in it. This is extremely important. And the reason it's important is because of situations like, oh, that's quite accurate, of uh, the station nightclub. I shall put a link to that incident down below. Uh, the Isle of Man uh, seems also almost appropriate here because uh, it, it does melt, by the way, it's just stuck all over the fingers. Uh, the Isle of Man had its own similar disaster involving flammable building materials, and it was uh, the Summerland disaster, which I may also link to as well. But the gist is that uh, you don't want flammable materials, particularly on a wall where the flames going up not only ignite the material above them, but also cause an airflow up the way, which causes accelerated burning. So uh, if you're going to get acoustic foam for your studio, make sure you get the properly flame rated stuff. So the supplier I used, I'm just looking at the box here, was www.soundfix.co.uk, who are not a sponsor. And I'm going to stick it on the wall rather destructively with aerosol adhesive from Felton's, the local hardware supplier, also not a sponsor, but uh, a good source of materials. Quite affordable actually, it was the less than I was expecting. Four pounds for a large tin of spray. So here's where the experiment starts. You can listen to my voice now. This is how it sounds now. I'll get that piece of foam out of the way so it's not colouring the sound and you get the boxiness. I'm expecting the bass still to be there, but some of the treble that is bouncing off these hard walls and hitting the microphone uh, may change. So when you listen after I've added the foam, you'll be able to hopefully hear a difference. I'm about to add the foam now. And we're back, and it's time for you to judge if you think it's made any, any difference to the sound. So I want to uh, just reiterate that I used flame retardant foam. The foam came from, I've just completely covered that up. One moment, please. Soundfix Co UK, not a sponsor. The adhesive I used, which was from Felton's, also not a sponsor, which is a local hardware store, is Stick Attack Super Spray Adhesive, which says, Designed to fix carpet tiles, foam back carpets, polyurethane. This is polyurethane foam, I believe. Uh, basically, foam and paper underlays. It also says it's not suitable for polystyrene PVC or vinyl linoleum, since it will probably dissolve those because of the solvents in it. Cutting the foam was done with a mixture of a long, sharp knife and scissors, and marking was done with a Sharpie and a steel rule. It went up very easily, and I have to say it's very odd. It feels very professional suddenly. It looks good. Um, it looks very nice. It's very relaxing because it's all dark. Uh, the only reflective surface left now is the table, because I didn't put foam in that. I could put soft furnishings on it. I could put a doily on it. Uh, and the computer itself, which has its plastic keyboard and its screen, I suppose they're reflective surfaces, but they're not really going to affect the microphone. So let me know in the dis the comments down below. Do you think it's made much of a difference? I'm sure that the audio geeks will probably do a complete spectrum analysis of this. Uh, I only got a small amount of glue on myself for reference. Uh, it, I was fumbling with this and somehow it managed to actually turn at a funny angle and spray all over the component cabinets as well. But fortunately, it came off quite easy. But there we go.
That is the result of me adding sound deadening foam to the live stream area of Big Clive Live, the live stream channel. So let me know in the, the comments what do you think of the results? Has it had an effect?